Depression is one of the most common mental disorder that we have, and about 20 to 25 percent of people will suffer at least one depressive episode in their life. And I believe whoever have suffered from depression know how debilitating and painful that experience is. However, from evolutionary point of view, depression does not seem to make sense. It seems to impair the Darwinian fitness model. The symptoms of depression seems to be very counterproductive and decrease our survival chances than actually increasing it. For instance, lost interest in sex will decrease our reproductive success. Yet, recent researches have been focusing on the bodily aspect of depression and mostly on the inflammatory response and its connection to depression. Those researches have provided us deep insights in understanding both the mechanism of depression as well as how it is actually evolutionarily adaptive. So in this video, I will share with you guys one very interesting theoretical framework of depression and share with you guys why and how depression can be evolutionarily positive. After carefully reviewing different evidences from different disciplines, Rayson and Miller proposed pathogen host defense theory of depression, which is abbreviated as pathos D. So in this theory, they proposed five major hypotheses. The first one is that depression should be associated with increased inflammation and inflammation activation should induce depression. And secondly, allelic variant that increase possibility of depression should also enhance host defense and innate immune inflammatory response. And thirdly, environmental risk factors for depression should be associated with increased possibility of infections. And the fourth hypothesis is that patterns that increase immune activity associated with depression should have decreased mortality from infections. And lastly, the depressive symptoms should act as a way to enhance our survival chances in acute infection or when there is a high possibility of infections. And due to the length of this video as well as the relevance of the materials, I will not go through all five hypotheses. Instead, I will be focusing only on the fifth one and try to explain you guys why inflammation is connected to depression and how depression can be evolutionarily adaptive. There are already quite a lot of studies and researches confirming the connection between chronic low-grade inflammation and depression. And not just depression, low-grade chronic inflammation is intimately connected to, say, obesity, to diabetes, to cancer, to all sorts of uh, chronic disorders. So the main depressive symptoms from DSM-5, we can see that there are depressed mood for more than 14 days, loss of interests, a sleep disturbance, which means too much or too little, and eating disturbance, which means eating too much or not eat at all, or eat too little, fatigue, psychomotor disturbance, excessive guilt and worthlessness, suicidal thoughts, and concentration problems. So in the paper, two authors suggested that the depressed mood, the reason it siphons our energy away, is to protect us from potential damages and infections. This is very much related to seeking behaviors and um, exploration of, say, environment. And when we think of it evolutionarily, it makes sense that when we have so much inflammation and so much immunological burden, that we do not go out and seek or explore. Because all of those behaviors involve risks of getting hurt, getting injured, and getting infected. And also, the reason we do not want to 
talk to other people, the social withdrawal is also very much meaningful. The first reason for that is we're trying to protect other people. So say if I am infected or I am ill, I'm having a fever, I might just get the bacteria or the virus to my kin or to my kids or to my close friends and this will causing them pain and causing them damages which is why you should wear masks <laughs> in facing coronavirus and secondly this is also protecting myself because as I am in a suboptimal physical state I have a very weak immune function other people might give me more viruses or bacteria. For them, for healthy or strong individual, their immune system can fight it, can get rid of all those pathogens or bacteria. But for me, as I am already weak and have a low immune function, a harmless pathogen might be lethal for me. And the same goes for lost interest in sex as well. Because firstly, as we were talking before, there is this natural social withdrawal because we're trying to protect both people close and ourselves. Also, in such a low physical state, it is better not to reproduce. We can wait a few days or some while when we have a better physical um, foundation, better physical function, and then we can try to reproduce. Also, depression is typically associated with anxiety or hypervigilance as well. So from evolution or survival point of view, this makes perfect sense. So when we are in a suboptimal physical state, we are facing much more risks than when we are healthy and strong. For instance, my, my mate might be taken away by a competitor. I might lose some uh, territory, I might lose my social status because I cannot fight or I cannot uh, just be there and defend it. Or someone might just come to my home and steal something from me, like some food or some valuable stuff. Or because my enemy knows I'm in a weak state, they might come to attack me or some animal might come to attack me. And in this case, if I get more injury as I am in this sub-optimum state. I am much more likely to die. So in this case, it is meaningful to be extra careful and to be more, say, anxious because we are facing more risks than when we are healthy. So even though depressive symptoms seem to have a lot of negative influence on our everyday life, but when it comes to infection and consequent inflammation response, those depressive symptoms are very, very beneficial and adaptive for us. So the seasonal affective disorder, the SAD, can also provide us crucial insights in understanding the evolutionary significance of depression as well. So maybe some of you have heard of uh, SAD, the Seasonal Affective Disorder, but for those who haven't, essentially, Seasonal Affective Disorder is when people start to feel very, very depressed in winter. This affective disorder is very prevalent and pronounced in say Scandinavian countries. From environmental perspective, we can see that uh, winter in those places is very harsh. There is very short daylight and sometimes there's no daylight at all. And there is barely any resources or food available for us, except snow <laughs> and the northern lights. So in such a harsh environment, when we think of it evolutionarily or think about survival, it makes sense that people will become depressed uh, during the winter. Because as all of us know, what do we do when we're depressed? We just lie there and don't do anything. And this makes sense because it preserves energy. It preserves that precious energy we have. We store either in fat or the limited food we preserved during summer and autumn. So if we go out and go hunt, it is not economical 
because firstly it is so damn cold out there so we need to spend a lot of energy from the storage from the food we preserved to support going out and hunt and in the winter the successful rate of getting say some some rabbit or some fox or whatever is very very low so in this case it is better at least for some portion of the population to stay at home don't do anything don't waste any extra energy and just bear through the harsh winter and in summer people who suffer from um, SAD they are more likely to become anxious this also makes perfect sense when you think of it in survival terms because during the spring summer and fall when there are food you better go out and hunt either eat or store it in order to survive through that harsh winter and from bioenergetic point of view uh, Alexander Lubin in his book the language of the body has mentioned that the stress response as we activate our um, HPA axis we're essentially tap into the reserved energy that we have in responding or coping with the sudden stress which is very much related to what I mentioned in the previous video as we perceive there's some danger we're activating our body both immunologically as well as um, physiologically the pumping heart to prepare the potential fight or uh, dangerous situation so the other very important and interesting thing from bioenergetic point of view is on um, um, the chronic muscle tension bioenergetic practitioners believe that every form of chronic muscle tension is essentially a suppression or repression of unresolved emotional issue and the mechanism of it probably that's for another video but physiologically if we have chronic muscle tension most likely as modern modern society people for instance uh, the lower back pain as well as uh, base of neck those pains are caused by chronic muscle tension which essentially is a resolved emotional issue however physiologically when we are constantly tensing or you uh, tensing our body tensing the muscle it is gonna cause inflammation and this is the same as say you go uh, exercise or you uh, do bodybuilding when you lift weights you are breaking down your muscle and as those tissue are breaking down our body is gonna go repair it and this is gonna cause certain level of inflammation normally when we have those broken muscles there are inflammation our body go fix it and uh, it's fine and we relax we're all good however if it is chronic muscle tension which we normally do not feel those muscles say in the lower back they are constantly tired as you have just finished a gym session in this case all those overly tired and broken down muscles will always firstly cause pain which is a sign of inflammation however as they are never say rested they will cause tremendous amount of inflammation in our body so that's all for this video i hope you liked it i feel i said <laughs> a lot of things there are a lot of information and i'm very happy that you reached this far and of course if you like the material please subscribe share and comment down below there will be more videos about psychology coming up every week i hope you got some meaningful and interesting information from this video and uh yeah i uh, hope you liked it and i will see you next time